When you come to a crossroad and run into the winner and the quitter in you, listen to the winner. The quitter will never take you down the road you want to travel. I believe we all have a winner in us. There is a winner inside of you. Sometimes we just have been around negativity for way too long, developed a mindset of a winner. The truth is, most people give up on their dream. Most people give up on their dream to live the average lifestyle. But it really doesn't matter what most people do. What do you do? Because you are different. You will never give up on your dream. You will never not listen to the average. You will always listen to the winner in you. You will believe in yourself when no one else does. You will believe in yourself when you have no reason to believe. And you will never, ever quit. I know some of you are going through a rough time right now. Some of you are going through the fight of your life. Fighting for your future, fighting for your career, fighting for your family. Some of you are fighting for your life. And I'm telling you, don't quit. Do not give in. I know life can be tough. I know life can wear you down. But if you just stick it out, even if you don't get the result you will find, the character you show will be your reward. The fighting spirit you develop will be the reward. And it will serve you well for the rest of your life. Fight for what you want now or fight against what you don't want later. You choose. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare settle. Don't you dare get back down. Not today or any other day. When the tough moments come, never forget you are in that moment writing your own legacy. In that tough moment, you are setting the standard for your character. Do you have the character? Well, do you? When you come up to a crossroad and run into the winner and the quitter in you, listen to the winner. When you make a commitment to yourself, you make sure you see it through. Never, ever quit. Even if you don't get the result, you will find the character you show will be your reward. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare ever settle. And don't you dare ever back down. Fight for what you want or fight against what you don't want at a later time. And always know that God is right there with you. Just allow God to guide and direct you. And you will always be a winner. Good morning. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, an author, and a show. Excuse me, the host of this show, the Take Your Life Back Today radio show. You can also see a video version on YouTube. Every form of addiction is bad. No matter whether uh, the narcotic uh, be alcohol, morphine, crack, cocaine, or idealism. What fascinates me about addiction and obsessive behavior is that people would choose an altered state of consciousness that's toxic and ostensibly destroys most aspects of your normal life because for a brief moment you feel good. Reality is just a crutch for people who can't handle uh, life, uh, uh, handle drugs, I should say. Addiction, when you give up um, something anytime, as long as it, it's uh, um, uh, not today. Quitting smoking is easy. Many people have done it millions of times. The unfortunate thing about this world is that good habits are so much easier to give up than bad ones. Addiction begins with the hope that something, something out there can instantly fill up the emptiness inside. Addiction is just a way of trying to get something else, something bigger. Call it uh, transcendence if you uh, want, but uh, it's like a rat in a maze. We all want the same thing. We all have this whole, the thing you want, office relief, but it's a trap. You can get the monkey off your back, but the circus never leaves town, is what the saying says. Addiction started out like uh, magical pets, pocket monsters. They did extraordinary tricks, showed you things you hadn't seen that were fun, but came through some gradual dire to make decisions for you. Eventually, they were making your most crucial life decisions, and they were less intelligent than goldfish, those decisions. At first, addiction is maintained by pleasure, but the intensity of the pleasure gradually diminishes and the addiction is maintained by the avoidance of pain. At every single stage, 
Addiction is driven by one of the most powerful, mysterious, and uh, vital forces of human existence. What drives addiction is longing, a longing not just of the brain, belly, or loins, but finally of the heart. My friends, recovery from addiction requires hard work, a proper attitude, and learning skills to stay sober, not drinking alcohol or using other drugs. Successful drug recovery or alcohol recovery involves changing attitudes, acquiring knowledge, and developing skills to meet the many challenges of sobriety. Addiction is a symptom of not growing up and not wanting to get the help. The mentality and the behavior of drug addicts and alcoholics is wholly irrational until you understand that they are completely powerless over their addiction and unless they have structured help, they have no hope at all. I hope I, I have absolutely no pleasure in the stimulants in which I sometimes so madly indulge. It has not been in a pursuit of pleasure that I have periled life and reputation and reason. It has been a desperate attempt to escape from torturing memories, from a sense of insupportable loneliness and uh, a dread of some strange and impending doom. You know you're an alcoholic when you misplace things for, well, how about for a decade? I admire addicts. I admire them. In the world where everybody is waiting for some blind random disaster or some sudden disease, the addict has the comfort of knowing uh, what will uh, uh, most likely wait for him down the road. He has taken some control over his ultimate fate and has his addiction uh, keeps the cause of death from being a total surprise. Because he knows he's going to die. If he continues doing drugs and alcohol, he will die. Drugs have taught an entire generation of American kids that metric system. In the 60s, people took acid to make the world weird. Now the world is weird and people are taking Prozac to make it normal. What an oxymoron. What is addiction, really? It is a sign, a signal, a symptom of distress. It's a language that tells us about flight that must be understood. Addiction doesn't kill the addict. It kills the family. It kills the kids. It kills the people who tried to help. It kills people around the addict. If you know someone who is trying uh, who tries to drown their sorrows, you might tell the so them sorrows know how to swim. The sorrows will survive, but the person won't. First you take a drink, then a drink takes a drink, and then the drink takes you. The first thing in a human personality that dissolves in alcohol is dignity. Habit is habit, and not to be flung out the window by any man, but coaxed downstairs a step at a time. The dead drug leaves a ghost behind. A certain hours it haunts the house. It haunts the addict. The initial journey towards sobriety is a delicate balance between insight in, into one's desire for escape and abstinence from, one, uh, from one's addiction. You can come out of the furnace of trouble two ways. If you let it consume you, you come out a cinder. But there is a kind of metal which refuses to be consumed and it comes out a star. Folks, all the suffering, all the stress, the addiction comes from not realizing you already are what you are looking for. Turn to Christ today. Christ is your AA. Call me at 844-405-HELP. Together we can help each other take our lives back. Be good to yourselves and always be good to each other. Remember, a simple smile to a total stranger can change that stranger's life forever and it can help you in your own life. May God bless each and every one of you. Remember, there is no, no cure for any addiction better than Jesus Christ. Reach out to him and ask him to guide and direct you each and every day. May God bless each and every one of you, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Take good care of yourselves.